So you okay? Hi guys, welcome. We're just at the uh, World Development Movement um, EU hostings hosted by the yeah, World Development Movement and we'll be starting soon. Hopefully you can join us. seems to be the case. Um, stream health is at 100%. Just tell me if I should uh, losing problem, uh, getting problems and then what I should have to uh, lower the settings. Thank you, you can watch Just tell me if there are any problems and I might ask the video anyway. Hopefully it's actually uh, crisp. I'm using the Wi-Fi in this place. Thank you. 
that the audience um, do say about that. You don't want to go further. Representatives here this evening, and I'm very glad, from the Conservative Party, which is Jim Chambers here, from the Liberal Democrats, which is Jonathan Fryer, Jean Lambert from the Green Party, and Spencer from the Labour Party. Um, we're going to try and give them quite a working over and quite a hard have things. So before we start, make them feel welcome, because we are grateful that they've come. Can we give them a big round of applause? <laughs> We can also um, invite UKIP, UK Independence Party, and they declined to come. Um, despite having been given weeks and weeks of advance warning, they then said at the last moment it was too late for them to be able to reply, <laughs> um, which we can't really understand. So maybe we can just say something about UKIP to start off. A good thing we're here. Um, UKIP, I think we've seen from the stuff that you may have got through the front door, like I have, are an unremittingly nasty party with a racist agenda. So we can get that out of the way immediately. <laughs> However, what I will say about them is on TTIP, on trade, they are quite interested. Because they say we've got a bit of a difficulty with TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. Because on the one hand, we like it because it gives so much more power to business. It basically gets rid of a lot of the environmental and labour standards, which we have a problem with. So we quite like that. But what we don't like about it, I'm pretty quoting from, from the responses of these youth and I'm pretty quoting from it. What we don't like about it is that it is negotiated by Brussels, by the European Commission, in secret, without any democratic accountability. So you could say we find it a bit difficult. But what I will say is that at least they're honest. And that level of honesty is something that I would really encourage from our um, comrades here on this top table. I've been asked to give um, a little tiny bit of an introduction to TTIP itself. For those of you who don't know TTIP, it is the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership being negotiated as we speak in secret between the European Commission and the US government. Today, the 19th of May, is the start of the fifth round of negotiations. They started back in July. And you may have seen the mass protests in Brussels last week led to hundreds of arrests of people coming forward and saying this TTIP, these negotiations are a real threat to our democracy and our future. Three main reasons for this. The first is a massive transfer of power to transnational corporations through the ability to invest free of the restrictions that we put on them in the past. And I'm sure this is going to be one of the areas which is brought up in the question. And particularly the investor State Dispute Settlement Mechanism, ISDS, Investor State Dispute Settlement Mechanism, which allows corporations to bypass the domestic legal system and take national government support before the investment tribunal. So these are one of the main threats, the investment side of it. The second one is the deregulation agenda. The fear that TTIP is not a traditional trade agreement, which tries to lower tariffs at the border, but it reaches behind the border to reduce the regulations which prevent corporations from making profits. So, for example, food safety, environmental laws, labor laws, we'll hear more about that as well. That's the second problem. The third is that it's trying to complete the market in public services, government procurement, massive privatization threat, and you won't be able to get back those public services in the future. All of these things, I think, are going to provide um, a, good, a good subject for us to discuss this evening. The running order is, I'm going to ask each of the candidates to speak for two minutes. Two minutes only, and they will get a, a, a short burst of George Formby at the end of their two minutes. <laughs> that's my um, ringtone on my, on my phone, so it'll be very exact and very honest. Um, we're going to ask them to speak in alphabetical order, which goes com, green, lab, lib. And then, once they have their two minutes each, it's going to be thrown open to everybody to question. So please make sure you've got your questions ready. The main point of today is going to be looking at trade and TTIP, so we're going to spend the first bit of time asking questions on that. 
But then from about half past eight to the last half an hour, we're going to open it up to much broader questions. So anything you want to ask, then do. And the final thing I'm going to say is we've got voting cards. You've got a red card and a sort of sage come turquoise card, depending on you've got the faded version or the not so faded version. We will have at that halfway point some trade votes when everybody will vote and also the people on the top table will vote to see how in, in sync they are with you, the electorate. Um, and then at the end we'll have another vote which is going to be a more general thing to round up. Is that good? Have got everything in? Right. Thank you so much for your forbearance for those long introductions. And now we're going to start. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry, we'll get you um, one red and one sage to acquire the photo card right now. <coughs> I'm going to hand straight over there for to Ben to start us off. Thank you, John. Uh, John asked for uh, some honesty from our candidates, so let me uh, begin with a, a, a stop, some honesty from me. Um, we are broadly speaking in favour of DSEPM. We believe it would be generally beneficial. If you look at, uh, if you consider for a minute that the big change from the Conservative side. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry, didn't catch your question. Yeah. 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 You can tell us who you are. Uh, I thought I'd meet John. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you look at the trade that uh, there is between European countries at, at the minute, uh, no one would disagree that that's beneficial. No one would say that uh, uh, it, it's taking away, uh, in, in the free trade sense, from uh, national sovereignty uh, and, and other things. Mm -hmm. So uh, this agreement has the potential to add 10 billion pounds to the UK economy through increased trade with the United States, which is already our single most important export market, actually bigger than any single European country. And if you think about it, there are so many ways in which the American market is close to us at the minute because there are these protective tariffs. For example, sportswear has a 32% tariff on it. There are tariffs on, on cars. Um, and also uh, the energy exports going both ways. For example, we would be able to um, receive cheap US gas that's much cheaper than, than gas here if, if we were part of a free trade agreement with the United States. And the other really good aspect of, of, of TTIP is that it would create a free trade zone that would encompass half of global GDP. And it would act also as a, sta a high standard for free trade agreements throughout the world that so would then uh, to put pressure on China and India and other countries to raise their standards to that to the level that it would actually be uh, imposed through, through the, the whole uh, TTIP process. So I think you, you can see that there are lots of potential economic benefits. This is not to say that there are potential costs, uh, of course, but, and there are potential issues that, to worry about. And we would we will be very careful in uh, uh, ensuring that we, we take those into account and, and make sure that they don't happen. Thank you very much. That's very good. And you had a little bit shorter time because you were interrupted at the beginning. But um, I would also like to say that there is a little bit of, uh, we've said to the candidates that we will also have a bit of a, a, a reality check. The £10 billion claim which has been made by the government. The £10 billion claim which has been made by the government has actually been disowned by them as well. We met with Ken Clark. As far as I understood, it wasn't made by the government, it was made by the Centre for Economic Performance. And then promoted by the government. And yeah. the government, but it's Ken, an Ken Clark has now said, who's the minister in charge, he said that we shouldn't trust that £10 million. Just to know. Jean, Jean Lambert, who is from the Green Party. Quite a terrifying experience, I have to say, with George Formby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was generally about trade in the beginning, but for us as Greens, we're very clear that trade, international trade, should not be undermining development, it shouldn't be undermining um, aid. And the, the Greens of the European Parliament have opposed a number of the free trade deals uh, for which the European Union has negotiated with various partners um, for a number of reasons. One of them is that we do have concerns about the role of international business in the way in which it's effectively creating its own international law, it seems to us. But we also think that if you're going to have a trade agreement that at least 
you know, it should between, be between bodies which are sort of equal almost in power. And certainly you can say that, that for TTIP this is much more equal in some senses than many of the agreements that we've had. But we don't believe that agreements are there to entrench inequalities and inequalities of power. And again, we're back to the advantages that are there for transnational <coughs> within the particular setup for this agreement and various others. And we also think that trade agreements should not be undermining standards on labor rights, standards on environmental um, norms, and indeed human rights um, standards. So we have concerns about a number of the agreements, as I say, that have been on the table are still on the table. So we feel that quite often the benefits that are advertised for them don't materialize, and that quite often the assessments that are done in advance don't really look at issues holistically. Various things are left out, and we can say something more about them when, when we come to a real deep discussion on TTIP. And for us as well, particularly in TTIP at the moment, the transparency issue is an important one. One of the very, very few things, in fact, possibly the only one that we share with you get on any agenda. <laughs> <laughs> You were there, um, you just avoided having to do this in Spanish as your forfeit for being made. Um, it was just in time. That's very good. That's from the leg. That's from the leg. Yes, I, I, there's actually not very much, if anything, that I disagree with that Steve has just said. So um, I won't repeat a lot of it, but um, what I will say is that when it comes to trade agreements, there have been some. Uh, most notably the uh, trade agreement with Colombia and Peru, for example, that the uh, Labour Party and our sister parties of the European Parliament also voted against because uh, of um, conditions uh, for trade unionism in those countries which were not up to the level of the standard that we would expect to protect basic uh, um, uh, rights at work. Uh, so uh, again, we, we would apply the same thing, but I just, it two minutes is not enough to outline everything, so I'm sure we'll get to the issues uh, in, in the couple of the questions. But very briefly, where um, I am completely at odds, uh, as I am with most things with UKIP, is on the issue of the competency of the European Union and the ability to negotiate uh, trade agreements of this, of this nature. Of course, we are talking about a marketplace of well over 500 million citizens and the ability to influence world trade patterns, which would simply not be the case were we to leave uh, the European Union. And this issue, uh, TTIP and in the ICS in particular, and I have to pay uh, tribute to the trade justice movement for the campaign they're running on this. Uh, this issue is by far the, um, uh, the, the one of which I've received the most correspondence. So this is uh, engaging citizens. This is something that people are um, uh, taking part in the conversation about. Now, interestingly, I think this is where we are doing better than at nation state level because we already have trade agreements, a variety of trade agreements between member states, between uh, EU member states and non-member states, and of course the UK. Uh, where ISDS and other similar provisions already exist, and we simply don't talk about them. We don't have this level of scrutiny. So I thought I'm actually extremely glad that this is an issue that we are looking at in detail, that civil society is looking at, and lobbying potential prospective MEPs uh, and existing MEPs about. And I hope we get to talk a bit more about detail, but I wanted to get that point out because I think it is a, it is a real positive, and it does illustrate the benefits of the European Parliament. Thank you very much, Steph. And now, over finally to John Spencer as the Mid Downing candidate. Thank you very much, John, and good evening, everyone. I've been involved in trade and aid issues for many years, and that's most of the time as a journalist working for the BBC and for Middle Eastern television channels these days, but also for a while as a lobbyist as the Secretary of the NGO Liaison Committee for the European Communities, as it then was very much looking at trade and aid agreements between um, the European Union, Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific. So I come from this from the perspective of basically wanting to see an agreement that will actually deliver what it says it will for not just the people of the United States and the European Union, 
but for the whole of the world as well. In other words, to ensure that there is an element of justice in this trade agreement. What I'd like to come out of this evening, which might surprise you, is not a vote one way or the other, and I suspect this way which colour cloud might be held up, but actually to urge in the spirit of European Parliament's workings that we who are genuinely interested in trade and aid work together to try to make TTIP better. And if we do that manage that, that's great. And if we don't, then we should vote against it. In other words, I think the potential is there if it is improved. There are two areas that I do worry about. The ISDS, this, this idea that American corporations could sue um, outside of the government, I find that appalling. Certainly would not support that. And I think we might need to ring fence certain areas, for example, the NHS here in Britain. But I would say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You're doing a great work, work, many of you, lobbying and pointing out real dangers, but don't assume, therefore, it won't happen. Let's try and make this happen better. And as I say, if we can't, then indeed, vote it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.